but can be expanded beyond chapter seven. We don't necessarily have to go in order um, for the questions or the chapters, but we can. Would anyone like to start us off with one of these questions or with a chapter to focus on? Hmm. Let's start with number one, something you put in your from chapters 5 through 7. How is the Republic of Gilead a patriarchal society? Description, the author, um, she put based on like the, the, the Japanese and tourists, I think. When I was reading it, it kind of made me sound, it like in the way it sounded in my head and it could have been just me. But they sounded like they were like <coughs> exotic dancers. Like they were like, like the way to describe them, like how they dressed, like if they were like, they didn't have any clothes on. And then like as I started reading, it doesn't make more sense. <coughs> Like when they said like, when they're coming down, like, when they're happy, 
I wrote and like the margin like are they happy? Cause it's like, are you supposed to? It sounds like that's something that they're supposed to say. If that was ever to be asked by someone not a part of their society, so it's like I felt like they were forced to say that they were happy. Yeah. Um, I think that the they were clearly guards around, so like, um, like if they would have said no, what would what would have been the actions from the guards, or like, what would have been the reaction? Mimi's speaking about this question about who the narrator is telling the story to. So she's really telling something. Why is she still saying that she's happy? Why can't she admit that she just said this because she was forced to, but she's really not happy? She's still not admitting that she isn't happy. Is she happy then? She's not telling us that she's not happy? Who's she telling this to? Is she still not saying that she's not happy? Or is she happy? Um, what I... I highlight it as God gives violence, but sometimes it is as dangerous as not to speak. Like, by her, I feel like she only said it because she, like, I feel like she might have said it, or, um, like, if, like, if she were to say that she wasn't, then what would the consequences be? So, I feel like that was a strong, like, statement that she made, like, by her saying, like, oh, she is happy, because if, and I also think it goes with the whole idea of speaking up. Like, if she doesn't speak up, then like, it's also called, it can cause damage. So I think it goes with the whole idea of like, standing up for yourself and having your own voice. But she did it in a way like, her lying, I guess you can say, or if she is lying. Also, in a way that they're dressed, but for Pakistan, it's more of a religious thing, but it's like the, the color is made specifically as well. So I was kind of comparing it to how things are in Pakistan and in India and areas around there. So 
on 21, um, where she talks about like how this guy is supposed to like, she makes a statement about, um, she says they're supposed to show respect because of the nat nat nature of our service. Um, I kind of question like if it really was like a patriarchal, 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 um, if that's the word. Right. Um, society because the guards are men and uh, they are women. So I kind of like questioned it a little bit, like how um, is this uh, is a society where men are supposed to be viewed as hi like higher up, but they are guards and they're supposed to show the women respect. Um, I feel like it's more of like they don't. Look, it has to be with like your wealth and your status as well as like being a male, like um, because like. I don't know, I just think it's like, it just has to do with like your like social class and like your economic class. I feel, um, <laughs> this, in this particular quote, when I thought about it, I, was, I figured that it was more of like they pity them and that's why they like have to take care of them. Also because that in order to be, like to give birth, you have to be like healthy and stuff like that. And like the point of them giving, like being able to, um, give, be able to, what's the word? Uh, Produce, produce babies they have to have like be healthy and stuff like that so like if they're if they're treating them like prisoners it won't put like they won't be able to produce healthy babies that will live longer so like it then it benefits no the whole situation it doesn't benefit the situation i don't think they really care but it's just they have to um, Um, so the doctors, they will hang doctors that right now we have abortion, but then in the future and this, during this time period, um, childbirth is really appreciated, but these doctors are allowing people to like terminate a pregnancy. So they were being hanged for that reason. <coughs> And um, and it's like it's a it's a sin to do that in the society because there's not much birth that's going around. And um, I was gonna um, connect this uh, chapter to what Nadira said before <coughs> about <coughs> about patriarchal society being that not only men are in control, but like men that has like it's based on status and wealth. <coughs> Because on page 32, on the, the fourth paragraph where it starts, it's the bags over the head that are, that, are, that are the worst, worse than the faces themselves will be. It makes the men like dolls, which the faces have not yet been painted, like scarecrows, which in a way is what, what they are, since they are meant to scare, or as if their heads are sacks are stuffed with undifferentiated material like flour or dough it's the obvious heaviness of the head their vacancy the way gravity pulls them down and there's no life anymore to hold them up their heads are zeros so like um it's like they're putting that bag over their face when they're being executed it's symbolizing that these people are not worth living since they're going against what society is and um in a patriarchal society it's saying that it's a patriarchal society it's men are the dominant figure of society. However, it's not just every man. It's like people who has power and who has money that's being con that's controlling the society. So it's connecting this. I was like, I questioned it. I was like, throughout the whole chapter that I, chapters that I read, I noticed that that mostly it's like the commander that has like all these handmaids. 
And um, I also noticed that the wives don't do anything, but however, the women actually are more appreciated than the poor men since, and like the doctors here, and since doctors are not allowed in the society. So it's just like, I was questioning is like, what is a real a patriarchal society mm -hmm. and how it and functions. That's like, that's what I mean, so confusing because there's so many factors that play into it. Even now, it's like, um, it's, I'm not saying it's a patriarchal society. I mean, it's, I mean, if you think about it, it kind of doesn't look like a government. But mm -hmm. it's, um, it's like, uh, when they say patriarchy now, they mean powerful white men. They do not mean Latino or Hispanics, Latino or Hispanic, Latino or African Americans. Um, it's like this one specific group that are in power, and they happen to be men. Yeah.
Has anyone seen or read the book The Giver? I mean, no, wait, is it The Giver or The Outcast? No, The Giver. But it's great. You've all read it. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's called, yeah. So, um, that's, this kind of reminds me of that, like, how they're in a society, I guess, where, like, well, supposedly everyone is equal, and, I don't know, it just kind of reminds me of, like, how there's just this world, and no one questions anything, and they just live in the society without questioning it, and they just follow along. And she kind of reminds me of like, um, Aunt Maria. She kind of reminds me of like a person who like from that society. This society in general just reminds me of that. And the way they have babies. The giver. Um, so like the quote um, that you put on the, that, that was on the quiz, I was thinking like when she was started writing this, also a story I'm telling since in the beginning, she was saying that she's alone at night. Uh, it's her own time. It's her like peaceful time. I was thinking like she's writing a journal, even though she's not allowed, the women are not allowed to be literate. But however, during her memories, when she has a flashback, she also says that, like, one of the, on 37, it says, we studied, we studied things like that then, or like, and then she was saying that she has a paper due on the next day. Um, so I was thinking that since she knows how to write, she's literate, she was writing a, a journal, and then she thinks that someone will find it, and then she was writing the you, like, you, the person that's reading it, and it's like, you know, she's talking to you. Notes. 
it doesn't really ruin the ending, but it like makes your mind, it, it will make you feel probably more confused and less confused at the same time. But some, if, you're, if you really want to go crazy about question three, you could read the historical notes like now. It won't mess up how you understand the story. It'll probably make it more interesting as you continue to read. It could give away some things, but historical notes. They're not, they're fictional historical notes. They're not real. So that's something to think about. But if you start reading them and you think it's ruining the story, don't read them. Um, so she might be writing this down. Maybe she has a secret diary that she's writing in because she did know how to read and write before. She, she said that she's speaking these. I'd rather, it's a story I'm telling in my head as I go along. Tell rather than write on the bottom of 39. So yeah. then she kind of suggested, but is she just saying that because, you know, she, is she just writing that down because she plans to say it later? Or is she, is she even, is this even going anywhere? Is this just a, a stream of thoughts? Um, yeah. And if she's telling it, then how is there a record of it? Who wrote it down later? And how did they write it down? Was she interviewed by someone? Did she record it? How did she record it? What kind of technology did they have available? Because it sounds like they destroyed a lot of technology. Take this line of thinking many different ways. Um, in chapter seven, who does she think about? She thinks about different, she has like three flashbacks and then a whole like thought about who she's telling this or writing this for. But she thinks about three people. Who does she think about? Her mother. Her mother. Her friend. Mara. And her, friend. her mother's friend. Her daughter. It's about her daughter on page 39. Um, that one's the hardest to kind of figure out. We can talk more about her daughter on page 39 tomorrow, but um, on page 37, what kind of person is Laura? She, she likes to smoke a lot, it seems. Like, she has a cigarette in between her fingers, between her stubby yellow and dead fingers. And she has a beer, so I was thinking she's like a drunk addict or alcoholic addict. 